there. Don't forget tonight, be here this evening. Bring somebody with you. Down this pad on this, please. Uh, Six o'clock this evening, we got some real special things to talk about. Uh, that'll be tonight, six o'clock. Church is the Sunday evening place in the warm weather because you still get out and it's daylight and you can go get an ice cream or something and enjoy a little time with the family. And um, uh, so don't forget that tonight, six o'clock, six o'clock. Uh, you said, it's a pretty weather, preacher. Yeah, and you better remember who gave it to you too. And he gave, better remember who gave you the eyes to look at it. And the feet to walk in it. So uh, you put God first. He'll bless you for that. Uh, let's um, take our Bibles. We're going to get right in the message this morning. Second Timothy chapter 3. Last Sunday I dealt with the subject. Facing the final days. I'd like to put an extension on that message today. And take it a step further. And I'm preaching on faith in the final days. How are we supposed to keep our faith in these final days that we're living in? I don't know a Bible preacher anywhere, a real Bible-believing preacher, that does not believe that we're in the final days. We say final days, we don't mean that it has to be day or tomorrow. It might, not be, it might be years. But when you look at the whole picture, we are definitely headed down to the end. So I'm going to preach on faith. In final days, so many people are giving up. I want to read quite a bit of scripture here, more than normal, so you follow along with me. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. It starts out by saying, This know also in the last days, that's how you know you're here, perilous times shall come. And then it gives you about 18 or 20 descriptive words or phrases that would describe the very last days before the Lord comes back. That goes on down to about number verse number 9. Now he begins to give you advice. Look at verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Just get it through our head. This world's not our friend. They're not going to be nice to us. If we stand for the Lord, we're going opposite direction from what this world's going. You cannot walk with the world on one hand and the Lord another. I like well, the devil and the Lord. They're going two different directions. And some people want to do that. Some people say, well, I want to fit in. I don't want to be able to look at that as a weirdo or something like that. Well, the Lord didn't fit in. The disciples didn't fit in. Noah didn't fit in. Daniel didn't fit in. Uh, the three, three Hebrew children didn't fit in. You can't you can't walk two different directions at the same thing. The Chinese say uh, one foot can't stand on two boats. Uh, you have you have one way or the other. And so he said, they're going to get worse. Look at verse number 13. Odd, isn't it? Number 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Pay close attention to that verse for the next little bit while I'm preaching. It said, the world ain't going to get better. It's going to get worse. I hate to tell you that uh, positive thinking evolutionist, uh, woke, uh, um, uh, liberal people that think uh, the world, uh, it's, it's our job to make the world a better place to live in. Well, you, good luck with that, brother. The Bible said it's going to get worse and worse. And it said they're deceiving, and at the same time they're deceiving, they're being deceived. Isn't that something? You know the devil's biggest trick is to make you think he ain't real. That's what these Satanists and stuff. I'll show you something in a minute. They think, we don't even really believe in the devil. Well, you nut. What do you? He's, you're obeying him while you're claiming not to believe in him. They're deceived and being deceived. They're deceiving other people in the, in the, while they are themselves being deceived. Now, I got I to gotta hurry here. Look at verse number uh, 14. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Go to a dead church and sit there and dry up and things get better? Quit? Give up. Here's what he said to do. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Hallelujah. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You better get that and get it good. 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And then he goes right into chapter 4. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Look at verse 3. For the time will come. You looking at it? When they endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers we don't preach to us I, we hear that all the time why you preach don't, don't holler and scribble. Uh, a bunch of little brats can't, uh, don't want nobody to preach to them because I guess it makes them feel guilty but they said uh, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but heap to themselves teachers look at verse 4 and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables Buddy, are we there or what, people? They'll turn away their ears from the truth. We don't want to hear it. Don't tell us we're doing wrong. Don't say we're in sin. Just let, lay, let us alone. We'll be turned unto fables. And when you turn away from God's truth, you turn to a fable that comes from the devil. But watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry there can be no doubt this morning that this chapter and chapters are about the last days and do describe the the day that we're living in uh uh this week i got a phone call uh from a young lady out way out in texas she may be listening now i don't know uh but uh she said pastor i need to ask you some questions she said i go to college she said i'm i don't know what grade uh, uh maybe a junior college, something like that. And she said, I have some questions. I said, yes, ma'am. I'll be glad to help you if I can. She said, I watch you all the time and it's refreshing to hear uh, what, what y'all, what y'all, how y'all preach and everything there in North Carolina. And she said, she said, I go to a Baptist school that used to be Baptist. And she said, it used to be a Baptist school and now it's not called Baptist anymore. That's a strange thing. And she, she, she said, they'll no longer call themselves Baptists. I said, why? She said, well, they believe now in this new sort of, uh, new sort of looking at things. And she said that now my school say that they are not sure what hell really is. This was a Baptist school not long ago. And now saying they're not sure what hell really is. Listen, people. There are preachers by the tens of thousands taking that view now. Well, it don't really mean what we've always thought it mean. You know what's odd to me? It's odd to me they sure don't mind it's taking heaven for what it says it is. <laughs> don't, you that's sort of, uh, don't you think that's sort of being a little bit discriminatory? Uh, saying, well, we believe what it says about heaven. Woo! We're going to go get to live forever in a gold city. What it says about Well, we don't know. Does it really mean, you know, that, that's the way. Uh, you can't pick and choose what parts of the Bible you don't like and say, that ain't right. And uh, that part is right because I like it. That's the way this, this works. I hate to tell you. Uh, but she said, uh, she said they are saying now that uh, uh, all these things, that our, our, our best thing we can do as Christians is not put, emphasis on personal salvation I said what uh, she said our, our, our emphasis should be on making the world a better place to live that's that old wicked uh, left wing philosophy from the, the, the people of religious leaders from days gone by the wokeism secularism humanism uh, com, uh, communism and seducing we are seeing an onslaught of a wave a tidal wave like a tsunami against our traditional Christian faith. And all God's people said, Now, what should we do? What are we going to do in these final three, three things right quick that I'll give you what we should do? Here's what the Bible says. I'm not giving you my opinion. This is what the Bible says we should do. The first thing it says we should do is keep on believing what you've always been taught. 
You grab a hold of what God told you when you was a little kid by your mother's knee and what, that night that you got saved and how the Lord worked in your life and how He's worked, took care of you all down through these years and you grab a hold of that and you hold on to it with all of your might. Don't be shaken by the world uh, uh, suddenly deciding everything we've always believed is wrong. I said I talked last week about them UFOs landing. I'm, I'll mention more about that this morning. When that stuff starts happening, buddy, and they start saying, uh, old, old Tucker Carlson, you know, who just got fired the other day uh, from the news. That old boy's smart. And uh, uh, he's done the thing. He said, uh, there is no doubt about it. He said, there is no doubt. They said, oh, you believe in UFOs? He said, well, you, you're, you're crazy if you don't. They've tracked them. They've been fired on. They've been shot at. They've been dealt with. They have it on video. And he said that now he don't understand. I do. But that's because I got a Bible. He's smarter than I am, but I got a Bible. Uh, he said the, the big thing now is USOs. That's under underground submergible, un, unidentified submergible objects. Stuff going underneath water. And he said they're not coming from outer space. They're coming from down there somewhere. And I said, you're coming around, buddy. You're coming around. That's a smart man. That man's got some intelligence. he got some IQ. And because uh, he's facing facts. And he said they're going underwater. He said they've tracked them things underwater at over 100 miles an hour. Like uh, 100 knots, or like a knot, like 1.1 1. 1 mile an hour, something like that. Like be almost 100 mile an hour. And he said it's impossible that something goes 100 mile an hour underwater. He said if you took a 45 caliber pistol in a, in a, in a water, a pool underwater, from here to that back door back there, let's see, I can go, well, not as far as that back door, 50 feet, about right here. He said, you could fire a 45 caliber pistol at me underwater, and I could catch that bullet in my hand. Wouldn't even hurt me. That's the resistance of water. No, I'm not going to try it. But uh, that's what the man said. And he said, uh, uh, he, he said, he said the resistance of the water would slow down that bullet that much. And he said, uh, we are getting ready to see something big that changes everything. We always do. 9-11 changed everything. Wuhan flu changed everything. This time it'll be something coming completely out of the opposite corner that we're not expecting. But you can mark it down. It's coming. And God said it's going to be strong delusion. So if a bunch of people show up like that saying, the Bible's not true. That's just what crazy people believe. No such thing as that. No such thing as God. We put you here. We started here from Alpha Centauri 35 million years ago. And we placed planets on, you're on this planet. And we've been watching you and observing you. And finally you're able to accept what we have for the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a seducing spirit. That's what's coming on this world. That's what the Bible said. You know what we're supposed to keep doing? We're supposed to keep believing that there is a God. We're supposed to keep believing that the Bible is true. We're supposed to keep believing that Adam and Eve were real people in a real garden with a real choice, with a real serpent tipped in them, with a real original sin that got in the human race and flawed this race. And that's why the world's in the mess it's in. Just keep on believing what we've always believed. Hey, people, I've believed this all my life. I didn't get saved when I was 18, but my mom taught me there's a God when I was a baby. Go all the way in my life growing up. I'm all, I've been doing preaching all these many, many years. And I'm telling you, I still ain't found nothing better. I've never found nothing no better to believe in. There's not a better philosophy in this world. There's nothing no better we can put our faith and trust in. In these last days, just pull your toboggan down, out past your seat belt, and put the pedal to the metal and continue what we've always done. That's what the Lord said to do. And he said to be deceived and being deceived. Now this morning, I, I will, I'm going to show you something here in just a minute. You can help me out back there. In just a minute, I will, I will show you something here that might surprise you. Turn the blue one off, then turn it back on in a minute. Uh, let, I'm going to show you something that might shock you here this morning of what's going on in this world. Just a few days ago, I think last week, they, uh, they had a big uh, get-together, you might call it, up in, uh, uh, I think it's up in, uh, in, in uh, way up north somewhere, in Baltimore somewhere, like that. And they had uh, uh, Satan Con. Satan Con. The biggest, the biggest gathering of Satanists at one place that they had ever had in a, in a meeting like this. They charged people money to get in. 
and it seated 800 people and it was packed, jam full. Let me, I'm going to show you uh, just, I mean, maybe 30 seconds of it and show you what they did in this religious revival that they had trying to uh, steer people into their religion. And so this morning, we'll show you that right quick. Go ahead, Eric. Get these lights. And let me, let me show y'all, y'all. I'm going to show you what I'm preaching is true. Uh, here's what's going on as far as the, uh, the Bible is concerned in our generation. Ready? Watch this. Blue and on. They're saying, Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. This is last week in the United States of America. Got more life in it than a lot of Baptist churches do. What a shame. What a shame people spend more energy and loud their voice for the devil that's going to laugh at them in hell than we will for Jesus that died on the cross for us. Look at this. Watch what this leader does. Let them continue without fierce opposition. And we stand here today in defiance of their speech and destroy their symbols of oppression. She's going to destroy the Bible because it represents oppression in her mind. Symbols of oppression. That's here in America. That's here in America. You say, well, they have that right. You're, you're absolutely right. They do. They do have that right. But you know what? You say, Brother Danny, that just turns my stomach. Yeah, it does mine too, but it makes my soul want to shout. Because you know what? Listen, they never said one word about the Koran. That's a religious book. That Koran oppresses their lifestyle worse than the Bible. But not a word is said about the Koran. Not a word is said about the, the Hanagitas and the, the Buddhist language. Uh, uh, no other religion. Just that Bible. Just that Bible. I don't know if you realize this or not, but that proves which religion the devil hates. He knows which one's right. I'm telling you, glory to God this morning, brother. I, it breaks my heart to see them do the word of God like that, that our forefathers bled and died for. That hurts my heart. But glory to God, that lets me know there's an enemy out there that hates that book right there. You've got the right book laying in your office this morning. Watch this. Listen to this testimony. Now, they don't believe in the devil, right? <laughs> they don't believe in the devil. <laughs> what, what a bunch of nuts. You know what that little girl needs? I ain't going to say it right here in front of everybody. You know what? She didn't get it when she was a little kid. <laughs> That's a cock flag they ripped up. They hate the Bible first, then any kind of authority over them. So what we were doing is trying to destroy the symbols of the things that are caused to... Or that, uh, cause harm that we destroy things that cause harm the bible causes harm Cross us um whether that is uh people's theocratic views um trying to oh, instill I theocratic like rule in a, in a supposed secular society uh whether that is the supreme court utilizing their powers to um decimate our rights give power to those who are further taking our rights away from us give power to those who listen i ain't trying to take their rights away from them they have every right in the world to do that right there but I'll tell you one thing, if you think God's going to bless this country that approves of stuff like that right there and allows, you you got another thing coming, buddy. Somehow or another, us Christians have been lulled to sleep. We got this idea that, oh, well, it's always come around. We've always had a big revival. The United States will turn back to God. Listen, God ain't going to bless the country that allows that right there. No, no, no. You can forget that. Um, the symbol of the flag. All right, now I'm going to show you something else. Look at that. I hate for you to see this. This is an Easter church service three weeks ago. Now, look, people, I keep telling you and telling you and telling you and telling you if the pastor and the leadership of the church don't get a grip on the music that churches are playing and listening to now, that, this is where you wind up. 
It's a slow. Well, people say, well, it's just because somebody has a different style of music. Well, okay. If that's true, what? Look, this is the Easter service at a gigantic church in Oklahoma. I'm not going to let you hear but just a tad of it because it's so wicked. And look at these, look at these nuts on a, at, at church. You gotta have a look at that. Oh, my goodness. Talking about your body parts being fat. Now, this is the remainder of the service where they play Kesha, a sleazy, wicked singer that hates everything me, uh, Christian believes in. And this is the Easter Sunday service with Jesus on the cross. And they illustrate it by saying, we're going to die young. And that's all. Is that church or is that the Super Bowl halftime? You say, preacher, I can't believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a very well-known huge church in Oklahoma. Look at that. Look at that. What in the name of the Lord? Let's make the most of the night because we're going to die young. Let's all get high and get drunk. Live wicked because we're all going to die. Then this song, na na, the, da- the dragon, an angel turned into a hustler. The angel turned into a hustler. The angel, if you listen to that, you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, girl. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's not cute. Hustler, you know what that is? You know what a hoe is? But some of y'all sitting here this morning say, I can't believe our preacher's talking about that. Lord, you're living it all week long. You know why you don't like it? Because I'm showing it to you for what it really is. You can get mad if you want to, brother. The door swings both ways. I ain't, ain't nobody blocked in here. I love you, and I want you. I want more and more people coming. Hey, but we, you can't call that church. For heaven's sake, they're waxing worse and worse. How, how are we going to stop Satanism when that's what's going on in church? Could not they, that's a worse spirit and that satanic thing was about it. Look at this. Beyonce. So. Got a woman on the cross. That's, a, that's a church. And I guess I'm assuming that the gist was to say that that the devil made Jesus die. There he is. Too young. 33 and a half. All right, that's all for this for now. Turn the lights back on. What are we going to do? Brother Danny, I know. You know. And there's churches right here, Hickory especially, that are headed right down that same path. If the pastor don't take a stand about the music that's allowed and played in the church, then it's all going that way. And it's a preacher's fault. They don't do anything to get a crowd. Do anything to get the kids. Do anything. Listen, brother, if we're going to have a rock concert, let's just have one. But if we're going to have church, bless the Lord, let's have church and have music that honors God. And all God's people say it. Don't sit there and get mad at me. Or are you, are you, am I wrong? I mean, I, I, I'm a, listen, if I'm wrong, tell me. I'll apologize next Sunday. If I'm right, shape up. Get with the program. Let's continue what God give us to do. Number two, number two, you got to realize that strong delusion is coming really bad and it's already here. All this stuff I've been preaching about iron mixing with clay, it is true. All the stuff, I'm just going to read you part of this little article right here. Very, very, very brief, but it's actually four pages of stuff that says this unprecedented rise in hate crimes against American churches. We have seen in the last four months the worst year ever in hate crimes against churches. The leaders are saying, we don't understand this. Why would somebody hate a church? Now, the reason they hate a church is because that first clip I just showed you. They're being taught that God is mean, that Christians are awful, they're being taught that the Bible's terrible and, and racist and, and, and uh, all kind of stupid stuff like they, they believe the Bible teaches stuff like that. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not true. Attacks on churches are at an all-time high. There's, uh, a, a woman claiming to be a man the other day stormed a private Christian school and murdered three children and three adults. 
That's only the tip of the iceberg. The church on churches have been steadily on the rise for the past several years, undoubtedly much higher than ever before. A total of 420 documented acts of hostility that occurred within the last three or four years across the United States. Three gun-related incidents occurred on church property in the first three months of 2023. Guns. Somebody brought to harm people at church including the one at the Covenant School there in Tennessee the other day. In one end, two adults and two juveniles shot 50 rounds from a 9 millimeter pistol at a church building in, in Missouri. The property damage was charged as a hate crime. They don't want to talk about that on the news. It don't fit their narrative. In the first quarter of 2023, 69 incidents have already occurred. If this rate continues, quote, 2023 will have the highest number of incidents the six years have they've ever been tracked according to the upward trend in other words there were more church attacks in the first quarter of this year than there were in the first quarters of the preceding five years put together evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse we don't attack them we don't go to their satanic meetings and, and shoot, shoot them stuff like that you shouldn't they got a right to do that if they want to. We're sheep. We don't fight with guns and knives and war. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And, and I'll tell you something. You know what? The Bible tells us that we're to stand. Let's stand. Just stand. On March the 3rd, the day after the Kentucky House of Representatives passed a bill that protects children from sexual mutilation, gender transition, vandals sprayed trans power on a church in Louisville, Kentucky. Bet you didn't see that on the news. You won't, neither. It's the other way around, you will. Only the news that fits for our agenda is reported. The rest is ignored. And if a journalist don't fit in with the program, they just get rid of them. People, it ain't going back. We're not going back to the good old days. I wish we would. I wish we could. And God's still giving us some good days. Like today. Today's a good day. But if you think, if you think we're going back to the 1970s, you, you got on some bad dope, really. You, you got on some bad stuff, y'all. Uh, realize strong delusion is coming. There is no telling what's been put in our food. In our, you know why they want to make vegetarians out of everybody? Uh, we'll get into that. Tonight. God said you can eat meat. There ain't nothing wrong with eating meat. Meat's good for you in the right way, in the right way. It's good for you. You should. Listen, you, you are, uh, people say, well, yeah, that's bad for you. That's bad for you. That's bad. Well, you just think about it. Yeah. The old saying is, you are what you eat. I mean, would you rather be a strong bull or a piece of celery? <laughs> Have you ever seen them people? Like, <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> I, I'm not making fun of them. You eat whatever you want to. But you know what the Bible says about a vegetarian? It said it's a doctrine of the devil. It's a doctrine of the devil. It tells you not to eat meat. And some of you sitting here this morning saying, well, I, don't, I don't know. I just don't know. Because you don't read your Bible. You're brainwashed. You're in some kind of cult. The Bible said every creature of God is good. And nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. And your command to abstain from meats and forbidden to marry is a uh, doctrine of a devil. We are headed for an electronic cash system to allow instantaneous transaction to borderless cash, what used to be cash, transfer. Now, uh, just a second. You better remember this. Uh, you Don't do it right now. Go back and listen to this. You people at home, you type in your phone what they did. Two years ago, the Bill, the Gates, Bill Gates Foundation, or whatever you call that thing, uh, they applied for a patent from the patent office, and you can tap in on your phone, W-O, that's World Order, 2020, W-0-2020-06-06-06. That's the number of the patent. You don't believe it? You can look it up on your phone. W-O, World Order, 2020-06-06. 06. And it said that that patent is to eventually be filed by Microsoft, that's the Gates Foundation, in which human body activity will provide the user cryptocurrency, exchanging funds, by something in our body to award cryptocurrency to body activity. The green agenda, the woke 
devil, gender confusion, fentanyl, opioid epidemic that are killing thousands and hundreds of thousands of people, the disaster going on with gene editing, artificial intelligence, the physical, digital, and biologically melting down human beings to make us part iron and part clay. Get that little clip on that two something for you, Andy, and I'm going to let you hear a lady physician, this two years ago, talking to other physicians about what's going on. Just I'll just tell you when to stop it. Go ahead with that right now, Angel, if you don't care. This is happening because there's a bigger agenda. There's something bigger than us going on. We need to look at that. Look at the World Economic Forum. Look at their website. They talk about Agenda 2030. In nine years, they want all of us to be different kinds of human beings. Believe it or not, it's true. They call it Human 2.0. What this means is they will connect us with the Internet of Everything. It is pretty much melding the human body, our natural, God-given, beautifully divine-inspired right bodies like. with artificial intelligence. Do you want that? Absolutely not. They want us to all be connected, but not through our souls, not through God. Yeah, they want us to be connected that. through a computer, through a supercomputer. That's not connection. They want us to be okay. uh, immortal, too. They want us to be... Uh, that's a doctor. That's not a preacher's convention. That wasn't church. They don't even know the spiritual uh, implications there. The spiritual implications are... The Bible said in Revelation 13 that they'll put a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. Not on, like a tattoo. In. A, a chip. A chip. Now, that's already been done. Thousands of people in Sweden are now taking, it only takes a few seconds, get your chip implanted, you do all your buying and selling, buy it. And, and I don't, I'm not saying that's the mark of the beast. It's not. But it is leading us down the path. You can't see that coming, boy. You don't know much Bible. Uh, you can't see that. If you read your Bible, you can see what's coming. What's coming is a one world government, a one world uh, religion, a one world currency. And it's already happening. China's trying to outdo us and then and are in many, time, many cases. And a one world dictator, the Antichrist. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Realize strong delusion coming, and finally this saying, I'm through. Keep on preaching. What he said, verse 2 said, preach the word. Now, that means when it's popular and when it's not. Buddy, you get out on the street and see how popular the preaching of the word of God is in our generation. Uh, you, better, you better be prepared to die, buddy. You just don't know. People say, well, Brother Danny, uh, it, well, I'll tell you one thing. Oh, Noah, uh, you say, uh, I've had people tell me, they said, why don't you just lighten up a little, just preach the gospel. That's what, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm running you to the gospel with this. I'm telling you, that's how we know the gospel's true. All this stuff. You, you don't just preach on one thing every single Sunday. You have to keep up with understand the times that we're living in. That's what the Bible says. We should understand the times. And you do now. You understand where we're at. You might not like it, but that's where we're at. I don't like it. But the facts are the facts. That's where we are in this country. Now look, old Noah, he is the same picture. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming Son of Man. Old Noah had 120 years. And I'm telling you, he went against everything the world said. Here he got his boys out there. They're building this big old boat like three times longer than this building. And, and way, way higher than this building right here. Out there on dry ground. Building a big old ship. Pitching it with tar. Uh, like like a uh, uh, rubber burn on the outside so it wouldn't leak. Can you imagine what people thought about him? Can you imagine? A hundred and twenty years. Lord, I've been preaching 110, and, and he, he had 10 years on me. And he, oh Noah, he got out there and he just kept hammering and kept a hammering and kept a hammering. Can you imagine the news media? Can you imagine the, the talk show that laughed at him? Can you imagine? Hey, he wasn't popular, people. They laughed at his wife when she went down to the grocery store and bought groceries. You mean to tell me you're married to him? Why don't you leave him? The man's insane. He's crazy. I, I go to church every Sunday. And my pastor never says nothing about the world. Guy, are you nuts? Think of what the scientist in that day thought about Noah. He said, water's coming down. Drowned everybody ain't in that boat. 
All the leading scientists said, impossible. And in the schools they say, the leading, that's what happens when you deny science. That's what, are you listening? Are you listening? Can you see that same thing happening now? They, they say we deny science. We don't deny science. No Christian denies science. Science is wonderful as long as it's real science. If I tell you what, we wouldn't give you two flips and a half a penny, brother, for any scientist that contradicts what that book right there said. Hell, a freeze over before one word of that book right there fell. We've got the truth in this. Scientists, uh, scientists used to believe you bleed people and let them get diseases out. Scientists used to believe... Uh, 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 all kind of stupid stuff. They change their views every so often. You say, well, we got to follow the science. we got to follow science. Yeah, we do as long as it's the right kind. But the Bible talks about science falsely so-called. Can you imagine the scientists getting on TV and Bill Maher had them on HBO and uh, 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 old Whoopi had them, had them on The View and all the scientists say, well, let's just face it. The man's demented. Uh, he's crazy. Well, what do y'all think about uh, this man saying water's going to fall out of the sky and the audience laughs and everybody? Guess what, buddy? Guess what? Water did fall out of the sky. Water did fall out of the sky and that drowned the whole world. That was not, look, he turned out to be right. Now, look, y'all, I know I'm just a little nobody. I'm just a little Danny. I'm nobody. I'm nothing. I'm the least of all God's saints. But I'm telling you, by the grace of God, I believe what this book said. Next time, fire is going to come. Next time, fire is going to come. God's going to burn it up next time. You just keep preaching what we've always preached. You change what we Somebody told me the other day, they said, I heard a tape of you preaching 25 years ago, and it sounded just like last Sunday. I said, thank you, thank you. That's a compliment. I don't want to change with the times. Somebody sent me a text after the youth read a pastor's wife. She said, thank you, Brother Danny, for not changing. You know what? We need something solid. We need something straight. We need something that will stick with us. Brother, go down with it when the time comes. You say, what, what's going on, preacher? You imagine they how they laughed at Noah? They said he was self-righteous. You think you're better than everybody else. Why can't we be on the boat? See that? See that? That attitude? You're judgmental. You're judging us. Why can't we? Why is the water going to fall on us and not you? See? See that? See that spirit? Same thing we got going on now. Look, there's a girl, young lady, I don't know how she was, maybe, maybe 30, 35 years old, and they uh, one of those Christian program put her on she gave a testimony she lived in iran you think we get a little persecution here somebody turns down a track or life status or spray paint something on our door or something good night in the morning people in china church houses house churches they call them which is a group of people meeting to have church with a pastor and preacher like we're doing here this morning are against the law and the reason people say there's religious freedom in China on the news is because them dumb ball players ain't got enough sense to know fake church from the real church. So they think there's real, real church in China, but only state-approved religious organizations can operate in China. You try to do this right here in China, you'd go to jail or they'd shut us down. Or in Iran, or in Iraq, or in North Korea, or in Saudi Arabia, or in Afghanistan, or in Syria. This lady said she got saved. You see, in Iran, you don't have a choice. They talk about the Christians. You've got to be a Muslim. You're forced into it. You don't have a choice. You, don't, you can't say, well, I want to be another religion. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You go to jail. They put her in jail because she got saved. Her and some other friends. They put her in a, quote, detention center. This just the other day, a few, few months back. They said, she said we had to stay 10 days on a cold concrete floor with no light, no windows, pitch black dark. We had some blankets that was soaked in urine. And that's how we laid in there for 10 solid days. She said they were trying to break us down. I stood before the court judge. You say, Brother Danny, that, yeah, yeah, happens all the time to do what I'm doing here right now this morning in Iran. Well, Lord, if they got that for distributing Bibles, you know what they do to me. They cut my head off. They cut my head off. They do it all the time. Brother Danny, what are we going to do? Keep on preaching. Amen. Keep on preaching. Yes. She said, we're, they, they, they come and got me. She said, 
a witness to them. She said, I saw my friends get executed. By the grace of God, she escaped and got out. They let her out. In China, there's a house church broke up by police not long ago. And the pastor and them, they call it the Mayflower. They call their little churches the Mayflower churches because they want to do what the Mayflower did. Leave all that and come to America where they can worship. They want to come here so they can come together and worship like we can. And people here in America don't even want to go to church. What are we going to do? I want these girls to come on and get us a song ready this, this morning. And I want to put forth a challenge to everybody in here. What are we going to do? The Bible said looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. In these last days it's time to get a grip people. It's time to get a grip on what we've always believed. Grab a hold of it real tight. Hang on. Say, God, hang on to me. By the grace of God, we're going through. I ain't, I ain't trying to sound like no big, I ain't, I ain't, but I'm, I'm big chicken in my flesh. But by God's grace, I want to stand, let that light shine for him all the way to the end of this thing. The future is bright. I'm preaching a positive sermon to you this morning. Everything's looking good if you got your priorities right. If it ain't, you're in trouble. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. You know what you better do? You better get saved and get right with Jesus. Because one day it'll be too late. We had two saved here last Sunday. We had 26 to you. We had, uh, counting the other one, we had almost 30 people saved in the last three weeks. You know what you better do? You better get in while the getting's good. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. How to have faith. In the final days. Dear Lord, I pray in Jesus' name now. That you'd help every single person in this room here today. Oh God, please. Help us to put our faith and trust in you, Lord. For a bright, bright, wonderful future. Lord of God, I'm glad the future is bright for us. Lord, we're in this muck. We're in this fire. Sin down here in this world. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Bring us through, Lord. Bring us through. Take us out. Take us home to be with you forever. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I challenge every Christian here this morning. I'll take Jesus. I don't know about you. They're singing this morning. God's speaking to your heart. Amen. You let God speak to your heart. Amen. You let God speak to your heart this morning. He'll bless you for it. You come on right now. Amen. 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 Let's just get in this altar and say, Lord, I'm a witness. I'm going to be a soul winner. I'm going to get on fire for God. Come on, right there. Come on, young people. Mom, Daddy, let's get our life right with God here. Amen. Hallelujah. Come to a crossroad where I caught a glimpse of Him. The Savior reached out to me with hands that bore my sin. Right right for on. no greater yeah. love was shown right. than no on the cross at Calvary. Oh, and I decided then and there the choice was clear to me.
Tell me, you know, he kept those cameras off for a minute. Yep, go to work.